Hi there everybody, this is uh, Dan Calloway. I'm coming at you once again here. Um, today I want to show you uh, some things in the terminal that you may not be familiar with and a couple of commands that will help you out from time to time. Uh, I'm running uh, a Linux distro here called KDE Neon 5.11.5. Uh, it's based uh, on Ubuntu uh, and Debian Linux, Ubuntu 16.04 LTS to be specific. Uh, it came bare bones, didn't have a lot of things installed on it, uh, but that's good because I like to build my own uh, Linux system. Uh, and so everything you see here pretty much I installed myself, with the exception of a couple of icons over here. Uh, of course the dock was not installed and some other things, the widgets weren't there, so I've, I've tweaked it out quite a bit running a, a breeze dark theme as well. Um, and KDE Neon is out of the UK, so it's a great uh, operating system, great distro, widely supported, very popular right now on DistroWatch, got 23 um, is the popularity with about 383 hits a day, not bad. So it's fully supported, uh, I love it, and um, the reason I switched, I was running uh, OpenSUSE Leap 42.3 and I ran into a codec issue, uh, not able to play videos in my browser or browsers. Um, not able to do to run some videos. VLC Media Player was giving me issues. I tried to fix it, couldn't fix it, so I decided to drop it and move to uh, KDE Neon. And I'm glad I did because it's based on the Plasma 5 desktop, and I really like it, uh, KDE especially. Let's get into the terminal. Uh, so I click, go down here to the Start menu, click on it. It opens up my dashboard. And if you're familiar with Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu calls its terminal console. So any Ubuntu-based system is probably going to be the same console. So let me click on it, and that should open up the terminal. And if you recall, uh, if you're new to, to Linux, you may not know this, but if you're uh, you know, an intermediate, advanced user, you obviously are aware that you need to run sudo, or sudo, super user do it's called, uh, privileges in um, the terminal so that you can get root privileges in the system. Uh, root uh, can access and do anything in the system on the Linux system and you need that. Some commands if you try to run them without uh, doing sudo uh, it will uh, fail and t warn you that you need to to do that. You cannot log in to root as root uh, in Ubuntu based systems. Uh, it will not allow you to log in as root. You have to log in as a regular user and then when you go to the terminal, you'll need to do uh, sudo. Now you can run the su dash command, uh, su space dash, and, and log in uh, with the password as root in the terminal and stay that way. Or you can just run sudo when you want to have things happen uh, temporarily. And I believe sudo uh, across the board uh, stays active for five minutes unless you close the terminal and then you have to use sudo again, you have to repeat the command. So <clears throat> let's look at sudo, I want to update this system and make sure it's uh, got the latest updates. So to do that I'm going to run sudo apt, and aptitude is the package manager that uh, KDE Neon uses because it's Ubuntu based. So sudo apt update should do it, and let me hit uh, enter and it's prompting me for my password. I'll put that in, it's going to go out and refresh the repositories for KDE Neon 5.11.5. It's going to go out and fetch uh, anything it needs, uh, also any dependencies that are required. It's going to come back and install those and then present it to the screen. Um, right now it's telling me there's 104 packages that can be upgraded and I can run the app list upgradable and it will tell me what those are. I'm going to bypass that for now and just go ahead and run it. So I want to do a sudo uh, probably don't need to do sudo at this point, but I'm going to do it anyway. sudo apt upgrade. Okay, and that's going to upgrade the system. Uh, it's telling me what they are. I'm going to say yes to it and let it run. Uh, and this may take a few minutes, um, so I'll stay with it in the video. Uh, if I need to, I'll uh, pause the video and come back, but uh, I think it'll be fine. Um, there is 104 applications that need to be upgraded. You'll need to do this occasionally. Now KDE Neon uh, 5.11.5 is another distro of Linux that it will prompt you automatically from time to time that there are updates. 
uh, in the system if you're in the GUI, the X11 window. Uh, so you don't need to come in here necessarily and run this unless you just want to. Uh, I choose to do it because I'm comfortable in the CLI, it's called the command line interface, as opposed to the uh, GUI, which is the graphical user interface, which is what most people get into. Uh, so it's speeding along here. We're like at 68% sipping along. Uh, at some point, uh, we may get a, a progress bar that comes up. Um, but it's it's prefiguring the packages. It's reading. Here's the progress bar is referring to. So right now, it's processing the triggers on the applications uh, that it needs to upgrade, and it's doing its thing. So we stay with it. And sometimes you have to be you have to be uh, really patient with Linux because you don't know what it's doing in the background. If you look down at your light for your hard drive activity, and if it's flickering, you know that things are going on, and that's what I've got going on right now in my system. I've got a Dell uh, E6400 uh, Latitude uh, system. It's really nice. It's a business laptop, but it's old. Uh, so KDE Neon 5.11.5. <clears throat> really likes it, and, um, and and so I that's why I'm using it. Okay, so it's still going along. We still got a zero percent progress, so it's still not uh, going through the actual upgrade itself yet. Or if it is, it's at the early stage of it, and we'll get through this here in a moment. I was using a, um, as I said earlier, I was using um, OpenSUSE Leap 42.3. Really liked that distro. I didn't want to badmouth it. Um, it was okay, except um, I just could not get it to give me the codecs I needed for do my multimedia stuff. I, I like to um, create videos. I like to edit those videos. I couldn't even get my editor to install for some reason. It's called OpenShot. I've got it installed here, and that's a great editor. So I create my videos using a program called SSR, or Simple Screen Recorder, and I install that used by downloading and installing a PPA, which is a, um, a repo in Ubuntu. Once I got that installed, then I just installed SSR, and it was fine. And that's what I'm using, by the way, to create this video. So it works really well, I think. All right, so we're at 19%. It's clicking along. I'll stay with it. Uh, I got a couple of more um, apps or utilities I want to show you at the command line uh, that, uh, that you can't really run actually in the GUI. Um, so that's the thing about the command line. Uh, new users are afraid of it, uh, especially if they're not used to being in a, um, a command line terminal interface. There are other operating systems that use the terminal, obviously. Windows has its own, it's the command prompt. Uh, Mac has its own as well, um, and uh, it's called Terminal too. Uh, every distribution of Linux has a terminal back end. Uh, you can do things in the terminal that you can't do uh, in the GUI because the GUI is uh, limited software wise. Uh, command line is not, and uh, it uses Bash, which is the born again shell. Uh, and um, probably telling you too much if you're a new user, but if you're intermediate or advanced, then you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and so I like the command line because I can do things in the command line that I cannot do, uh, or cannot do easily, rather, in the GUI. Um, I mean, things like adding users, adding groups, things like that, uh, modifying users and groups, and uh, adding passwords to users, that kind of thing. You can do those certainly in the GUI, but I even do those in the command line as well in Linux, so, uh, you know, get used to using the, the terminal, don't be afraid of it, uh, it'll be your friend. Um, the terminal will let you do what you want to do, but it will also uh, kill you if you're, you're not careful, because um, as root, uh, it's not going to prompt you that you're doing something that may damage the system, it'll let you do it, because it assumes, in the Unix world, the philosophy is that um, you know, in the Linux world anyway, that uh, you know what you're doing and so you're, you're allowed to do that. Uh, anyway, we're coming along here, 60%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%, 
feel like I'm in a launch here for SpaceX. Uh, we're at 68% uh, now, clicking along. So far, so good. No warnings, no problems, no halts, no crashes, anything like that. One of the nice things about KDE Neon 5.11.5, I'll just go ahead and tell you right up front, uh, I've installed probably 30 programs and utilities now so far since I've installed this the base system itself about two days ago. I have not had one thing go wrong so far, so I'm really pleased with this operating system. Check it out. KDE Neon 5.11.5. All right, we're getting to the end. We're at 99%. We should be getting a prompt here pretty soon uh, so that we can do other things in the terminal. And I will uh, move forward once we get that to happen. I wanted to update the system because I want to have it updated before I get into other things here in the terminal itself. One of the first things I want to show you in the terminal is I want to show you how to determine your kernel version that you have on the system. Okay, looks like it's finished. And there's our, our prompt. Okay, and you notice it's a dollar, tilde dollar, which means we're now back in again as a regular user. We're no longer root. We finished what we needed to do uh, as root, which was to update the system. So let me go ahead and clear the screen. You can do that one of two ways. You can do a control L or you can just type clear and that clears the screen. All right, in order to determine the kernel version of your system, uh, the command line uh, command that you use is uname and then dash A, or the A switch, uh, or A option rather, which is for all. And so here we have Linux Data Pioneer dash KDE Neon is my host name. It's the host name of the computer. You may need that from time to time, especially if you get into networking. 4.13.0-32-generic is the kernel version that we're running. So that's the version of the kernel that we're currently running here in KDE Neon. Uh, and the rest of the information there is basically the date, timestamp, uh, some other things, including um, the version here. Uh, that we're running, which is x86-64, x86-64 Linux GNU, uh, which means we're running a 64-bit operating system, a GNU Linux, uh, which is, uh, you know, Linux is the kernel, GNU is the OS, is the operating system. Together they form the Linux distribution, and most people just refer to it as the Linux operating system. Uh, okay, so now we're back to the, the terminal again, uh, prompt uh, for regular user, and so the next one I want to show you is a command called top, and what top does is top looks at the top processes that are currently running in the system. Uh, across the top you've got information there which is, uh, it says that for 14 hours, 18 minutes, 19 minutes now it's been up. Um, and we have three users. We have a load average of 2.38, 3.5, 2.73. There are 148 tasks currently running in Linux. Uh, total one running with 146 sleeping. Um, zero stopped and one zombie. Now, uh, I've got a zombie process. Not sure why I have a zombie process. Uh, not to worry about it, but if you're not familiar with the term zombie, it means that a process was running and the parent process was killed somehow and so the process that's zombie right now is a child process that's left without a parent uh, so it's a it's it's basically an orphaned process that has no parent anymore and so it's zombie it's sitting out there it doesn't know what to do if I reboot the system it'll clear the zombie out alright so we've got 37.3 percent CPU um, yeah, and some other things I'm not going to go through all of this if you go down below that you've got your memory in memory in uh, which is RAM in KB bytes. That's KIB, not KB. If you're familiar with KB, that's kilobytes. KIB is KB bytes, and that's based on the 1024 bytes per kilobyte as opposed to 1000, which is normally what people look at. Down below that, now in this area here, uh, this shows all the processes. Here's the process identifier, which each process that is spawned in the system from a net on down gets a process ID assigned to it unique 
uh, for instance network manager has a PID of 913 if I wanted to stop the network manager I could kill PID 913 I'm not going to do that here but uh, I could do that and that would stop network manager um, it's basically there uh, process ID is so that you can identify the process the way Linux looks at it uh, and you can then kill that process if it's errant and uh, you need to stop it because it's causing a problem or it won't close you know sometimes um, you know Firefox web browser for instance has a PID assigned to it and there may be more than one PID assigned to uh, Firefox and its operation in your system but uh, if you kill all the processes or the major process it'll kill the rest and then Firefox will close if it locks up and won't close uh, this column over here shows the user assigned to that PID. So, for instance, Dolphin, which is uh, your file manager, a data pioneer, which is me, I'm the data pioneer user. Uh, I'm the owner of that particular process because I opened up Dolphin. All right, to get out of uh, top, you just hit the Q, and that quits, and it takes us down to the command prompt. I'm going to clear the screen again. Now, that was a pro that was a utility in Linux called Top. Okay, for top processes. Um, I want to show you another one that you'll need to install. It's called HTOP and it's a more human readable top version and that's where it gets its name HTOP. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and look and see if it's there already. So I'm going to do a sudo apt search. I'm going to search for it, HTOP, and it's looking, going out and looking for it and there it is. Um, does not look like it's installed although I can find out for sure if I do a where is htop uh, and it came back didn't show me a location so that means htop is not installed however htop is in the um, it's in the repo because it, it found it here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sudo apt install htop and so it's going to go out pull it from the repo um, and now it's going ahead and installing HTOP. And it says the following new pro packages will be installed HTOP. Okay, and so one newly installed. Now I've got the command prompt again, which means it's completed its installation. This is a command line interface tool utility, uh, so you're not going to be able to get it from the GUI necessarily. Uh, so let me go ahead and clear the screen and let's run HTOP and I'll show you the difference. This is HTOP. Now it looks very similar to TOP. The difference is uh, off here on the left hand side in the upper left there's some uh, graphical displays. One, two, memory, swap. There's no swap going on right now. There is uh, about 40% uh, memory allocation. Uh, one and two are the CPU processors. I've got a dual processor in this system. So it shows you what's going on with that. Got 74 tasks, 113 threads, three running. Uh, it doesn't tell me I have any zombies, so maybe the zombie dropped. Uh, the load averages here uh, are, are currently showing, and then there's an uptime here, two minutes or two hours. Uh, I mean, um, yes, two hours, 32 minutes, 18 seconds. All right, and then you go on down, and you've got the PID and your new user, your priority, uh, and other things here. I'm not going to get into it completely, but to close this, you can hit F10, and that quits. All right, and let me clear the screen. And uh, that's all I want to show you today. Uh, let me exit the terminal. To do that, I do the exit, and I'll do a subsequent video here to show you more about the terminal in Linux with some further on uh, commands. But I did want to show you uh, uname, top, and htop today. So. This has been a, a video to demonstrate the use of the terminal. Have a nice day.